Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Hops Geek News, your home for comic books, movies, TV shows, and of course, we feature a beer of the week, typically. Today, we have a great guest, as our guest today has ties to, actually, both locations that Lauren and I are, you know, from and are the stomping ground. So this can be a great episode as we talk to Travis Gibb about his comic book, Granite State Punk. And uh, man, for, for a lot of you guys up in New Hampshire, you know, Granite State, uh, we'll, we'll dive into that, man. Wicked pumped to, to uh, be talking this comic book. It's excellent. A lot of really good references that, that pull on the heartstrings, if you will. So with that said, Hops Geek News, you already know the spiel. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Social media, that's where podcasting platforms, all the same name. And then if you can go ahead and just spread the word, man. And this is a creator episode, so we don't have any news or notes. We're going to dive into it in just a second. My beer felt thematic, and it's actually from Lauren down in Orlando, Florida, from Sideward Brewing. I picked up Full Fuzz today uh, because I felt like it fit the theme. We're going to be talking about witches, and you know they got a little bit of the, the cool thing. And uh, one thing I really like about Sideward, this is a IPA, of course, uh, is their IPAs are just as good as their stouts. I uh, really love the brewery. They do a lot of really good stuff there. So Lauren, that said... What you got over there? So I actually, my full fuzz, I'm out of full fuzz, but I do have a sideward beer as well. Again, yes, I got their logo on the glass too. Their logo is very fitting for this, but I'm actually drinking their double IPA called Witch Hammer. So um, anybody oh, watching on the YouTube, God. I don't know why I'm so orange today. I don't know what's with the light, but the can's orange as well. And it almost looks like she's holding book from Hocus Pocus, but it's a little bit creepy. Listen here, well. Lauren, the Supreme Court's not going to give you rights back. Okay. Just because you're orange. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> All jokes aside, That's man. What I'm drinking. Of course, it's fantastic because it's sideward. And like Matt said, they don't do a bad beer. They are, Their beer is fantastic. Absolutely love what Sideward's doing. And of course, we do have our guests. So let's let's dive into it. Travis no, Gibb is joining well, us. I what grabbed, is up, man? Uh, my beers suck right now in the fridge, um, but I brought an Angry Orchard to play. Um, hey. I thought maybe you'd have a PBR. Uh, no, I do like PBR, but I'm a, I'm a stout guy. So I like expensive beer. That's a meal. Um, so that's, that's my thing. Yeah. Um, I'm also drinking a liquid. Yeah. So it's kind of like two beers. Like it looks like a beer, but it's not. <laughs> that's true. I always get messed up when I see liquid death. I'm like, Oh, what are they drinking? And then I see liquid death. I'm like, ah, oh, clever. It's clever marketing. It's really? Honestly, good water, I, though, I love really buying is. it with my nephew. Uh, we go into like a seven 11 or a common farms and they're just like, Hey, uh, you can't buy a beer with a kid around. I was like, this is not beer, good sir. <laughs> good, good, good news is it's actually the nectar of the gods known as water, funny enough. <laughs> well, and they do but, like lightly flavored water and stuff, and it's such yeah. it's really good water. <laughs> it is. It is. Well, I didn't know water in, out of a can would be so exciting to me, but I, I like water out of a can. I do yeah. love because this this comic book will talk about like the music influences, but one of the things I love is as I have gone through the music scene. Um, I know the comic Granite State Punk has a lot to do with like the punk scene, and I grew up in like the Warp Tour scene. And so going from monster cans filled with water to now like a lot of the shows are the Liquid Death. It's just funny to see that progression throughout the music scene. And uh, Lauren's reference of PBR, which is another staple in the punk scene. Um, but, but let's dive into was, it. That was referenced in the comic. So anybody who hasn't read the comic yet, there was a nod to PBR, which is why I didn't just randomly bring it up. <laughs> like, you look like a guy that likes PBR. No, no. Everybody who's in the punk scene, if they don't drink PBR on some level, is lying or they're not really punk. They're opposing. Oh, 100%. My brother's go-to beer is PBR. See, he's real, Nobody but likes it. Nobody likes it. I we mean, just, that, that's all we could it's afford. A beer, somewhere. yeah. <laughs> it makes you spend like twenty Zach bucks Brown on a man. show, like Zach Brown man, really? Yeah, because he says PBR in, in the song "Toes in the Water, Ass in the Sand," and then he goes to the lake and he's like, "A PBR in my hand, life is good Lord, today." You, you know, I don't speak <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but oh, yeah, no, man. that's always where mine goes. But I remember drinking like if there was a bar here in Orlando that you could buy like six PBRs at a time and they would just give it to you in like the case, like they would hand you half the case. Oh, nice. And we were just drinking out of there all night. Those well, I mean, yeah, like growing up in the music scene, that's what you get at the bar. You go to the Worcester Palladium or, you know, again, another with a casino ballroom in Hampton is yeah. another one. And you get the, the cheap beer and you can mosh and do all sorts of stuff. But Let's uh, let's dive into it, Travis. One thing we like to ask, I love to know, where does your comic origin story? Because you actually got a good one. Uh, you also have some ties to the comic book shop I used to frequent a lot. So how did you first get onto the comic book scene? So the comic book scene for me, um, 
you know, I've always been into it. Uh, and it's probably because of where I was born. I'm from Rochester, New Hampshire, so I'm from where the comic is from. But that's right next to Dover, New Hampshire, which is where the Ninja Turtles are from. Yes. So the Ninja Turtles are from, from Dover. And at, at my particular age, which I'm not going to reveal here, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ninja Turtles were a big thing. And like Eastman and Lord were, were around. They did small little things. And I, I met them, you know, growing up. So for, for me, like indie comics and creating comics is it went hand in hand, you know, and as I grew a little bit older in the nineties image blew up. Right. And then we had the tick. So like new England and new Hampshire, like that area of, of that is like indie comics is like what you need to do. You just literally make it and you're a millionaire. It's no problem. It's just super easy. That's just, how it happens. Honest right? to God. It's true. Funny enough. <laughs> I, I do believe you're buying really nice waterfront houses down there on the coast. Right. Right. That's, that's all you got to do. So, so that's really what, what led me into it. You know, I, I was a huge fan, huge nineties kid. I love the X-Men. You know, my grandmother signed me up to back in the day. Uh, I don't know if you guys had it in school, but they gave you like a came home and you pick magazines and you could order the magazines. Your school would get some money. Oh out. yeah. Yep. They, she ordered Spider-Man, you know, she was, so I got Spider-Man and I got it, you know, set from the time I was 12 to now I have never missed an issue of Spider-Man or X-Men. Um, wow. So, so I have every single issue that's come out since then uh, of that, except for stupid annuals because annuals are dumb sometimes Marvel. <laughs> I will agree with that. Annuals kind of like they, they almost sometimes like ruin the, I don't want to say if ruins the right word, but there, there's like a flow to the comics and then the annual will come out and then you're like, you kind of get well, thrown off a little bit. For new audiences. I feel like, I feel like that's their grab to, you know, just try to get new people in. Because sure. it can be over as somebody who didn't get into comics until I was an adult, it can be very overwhelming the first time you step foot in a comic store. And it's like, I don't even know where what just happened. That's why it was easy to start with The Walking Dead was one of my first ones because I knew like, you know, but even then I was reading them in volumes and then I needed the issues and I was like, I don't know where to go. But yeah. Well, yeah, I don't uh, know how to get people into comics anymore. Like, you know, where to start people. Like, this run is really good, but you could start at this issue one, or we just got to wait to the reboot. Should be a couple months, you know, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get you in. And I don't even think that's necessarily bad, but it but it is very confusing for someone who decides to get all in, oh, right? Yeah. Like, like if you need to organize your comic collection, you know, if it and there was a time in between where they didn't even have legacy numbers. Now at least they have the like legacy numbers, so you know what number it is. But there was a time where that didn't even exist. You had to just guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's it is very daunting too, especially as you know the rise of things like the MCU, DC universe, or all the other comic. Everyone's like, oh, I kind of want to read this. This is source material, and then they go in. It's like, okay, but where do I start? I realize that there's sixty plus different places of x-men like where does it start where does it end but marvel never really ends a storyline they just kind of like converge dc will do it uh to maybe their detriment but i actually like that dc will have a definitive end before rebooting something and it can be very daunting yeah. you're right but even you know with with like look at the uncanny x-men like chris claremont is literally now on like he just finished magic Horror nights and now he's doing this wolverine deep cut that is a spinoff from like issue 227 of X-Men nine in the, the eighties. And so it's like, yeah, those universes never die, but I will say to anybody who is overwhelmed, just pick up any comic book and kick it off. They will catch you up at the beginning and whatnot. And another great way to get into comics, I would say are these independent creators, like one we have with us because comics aren't just superheroes. There are all sorts of different things all over the place. You know, we have a whole creator corner. If you ever just want to dip your toes into one, like, yeah, come to Hops Geek News and find some. So, Travis, obviously you have been into a lot of this. You said Spider-Man kind of made you fall in love with all this in X-Men. So is that your origin story was getting those books as a young kid that made you want to get into writing comics? Yeah, I see, unlike most people, I don't have uh, I I have always been reading comics and always part of them because of the Ninja Turtles fame. Like seeing gotcha. the Ninja Turtles growing up and then... The Spider-Man, I know Spider-Man is what, what hooked me, but I was even leaving, living next to a kid. I don't know what his parents did, but he would randomly give me, he wanted to be my friend. I didn't want to be his friend, but he wanted to be my friend. And he would give me comics. He would give me a lot of horror comics, like Fright Night and like Chucky, like adaptions, like like next door at like nine years old. And I would, I would read them. So comics have always been a big part of my life. I, my goal from day one was to write comics. I, uh, I didn't know how, uh, but I was a huge film buff in high school. So I was like, oh, I'm going to get into Kevin Smith, like, mm -hmm. like Kevin Smith. So he's writing Daredevil. 
all he did was make a movie and it was independent. Didn't even have to be that good. <laughs> you know, just, just go out. And I, not that I don't think clerks, small rats, I'm a, I'm a huge Kevin Bisbee, but I was like, just make a movie. It's way easier. I know how to make a movie. So that's what brought me to Florida. Actually, I flew down to go to film school and decided I was going to make a film. And then I was going to pitch once I get one or two to, to Marvel and DC so I could write comics. Um, that was not what I, what happened, but luckily in like 2002 to 2004, I did write a few li little independent comics that I went to Megacon, met a lot of people, um, and, and got to write some stuff. Um, and then sometimes what happens, and maybe you guys have heard of this, you, you go through your life and you're in college and you're like, Hey, I'm going to have this thing called premarital sex. I'm just going to try it out. <laughs> I I've like never it. heard of that. Don't ask what me what do you about mean? It. how long I've been married. <laughs> no, I, I understand. I understand. Not everybody's heard about it. It's a it's a new wave thing. It's a new wave. A lot of, a lot of the kids are doing it these days. For all those sinners out there. <laughs> um and I, I had a, a child. So I have a I have a 22 year old, which is crazy. I uh, have but, a 20 year old. Yeah. But I so I decided to to be a dad. I chose to be a dad instead of do comics. Um, but you know, as my daughter was going off to, you know, college and starting stuff, I have a wonderful wife at different from the person who had that, uh, one night stand premarital sex. Um, and my wife knew that I made comics. So I had a book, it's called broke down of four dead bodies. Um, I had it in a folder and she was like, you have a complete book, uh, and you've never published it. I was like, oh yeah, I've got like two issues. It's fine. I just never got around to publish it. She's like, that's really stupid. And I really had no answer besides You're like you know what else is stupid <laughs> premarital sex right <laughs> i mean because i i am a i'm not a casual comic fan like i i sometimes hate creators because they don't read comics mm -hmm. i read a massive amount of comics my pull list is massive i read almost everything yeah. so like I, i'm a hardcore comics fan so my wife was just shocked uh so we went and finished that graphic novel and i got the bug and now I'm doing a Kickstarter month with various titles and all sorts of stuff and several publishing deals and all is she sorts your editor? of editor? She is my editor. Yeah, she's my editor. Yeah, I, I use her as my editor. I, and for many different reasons, not just because she's my wife, but she also has experience uh, with that. Uh, growing up, she worked for, again, this is for old people, uh, Sylvia Brown, who uh, did Unsolved Mysteries. She was like, yeah, I know exactly who Sylvia Brown is. My wife yeah. loves Sylvia Brown. <laughs> So she she did some of some of that stuff and helped there. So she's very educated in that. And you guys both read Grand State Punk, uh, or at least you're pretending to, which I either way, I'm very happy about. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, when you're speaking so intimately, like Grand State Punk is a very intimate book. Mm -hmm. You I need someone who really knows my voice, like because it's it's very much my like inner head, like mm -hmm. like like on a page. That is, that's so yeah. unique. Like, it's a very unique because sometimes people are like, oh, I just picked up X-Men and oh, I didn't really know that I wanted to write. But no, like you, right from the get go, man, it's like you were born and right as soon as you came out, boom, there's a comic book in your hand. And it's, it's really cool to get to see that side of the things and how much of a fan you are and seeing somebody who has such a deep admiration. And then it's also even more excellent when like your wife or significant other, whoever is like, no, dude, you like pushes you more often than not. And is there every step of the way it's, it's very unique. And I always love those kind of stories because it makes things more personal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And this story, I feel like, so Zeke, our main character, he is very vulnerable and, but he's also, I feel he's talking to us. So how did you, did you consciously make that decision to have the main character, like talking to the audience and taking it? Cause he's our narrator and our main character. So was that a conscious decision or did the story just kind of naturally evolve like that? No, it was a conscious decision. Um, so there's a movie called SLC punk, uh, which oh, is yeah. independent. Um, and he got Matthew Lillard kind of breaks the fourth wall sometimes and talks to you a little bit on uh, a very punk rock. So I wanted to emulate that. Um, as well as, um, really get you inside this character's head and kind of show you different versions. And it gets deeper as the issues go. Like in the latest issue, issue four, like we literally have a young Zeke who is a version of him who is still an anarchist who wants him to do kind of like your younger self. And then we have uh, a younger, another version of the younger self, which is the one he tells everybody. And then we've got the emo. One. Like I go very deep in that because I, I really want it to be about mental health and about recovery you know i use alcohol even though i, I drink i use uh straight edge and trying to recover uh, of that as part of the story as part of the narrative to allow that granted say punk is, is super personal what happened is um i now have a son who's five years old 
And uh, he was born in my, so I come from a family of, of drug and drug and alcohol abuse. Uh, very, very bad situation. They were both, uh, both of my parents died. My dad overdosed. My mom died. Uh, even though she was in recovery for a long time, she literally died because she had an ulcer in her, in her that burst. And she had taken Percocets for the first time because she had back surgery and she didn't know the difference of the the feeling of a Percocet or the stuff. And and so she died because it was oozing into her for a couple of days. So like it was very personal. And these, I hated New Hampshire. I just, it was done, right? Nothing good is can't can happen to it. But when you have a son, you're like, you got to show him where you come from. So I needed to learn how to love the state again. So I started writing this book to try to, express what I hate about the state because I express a lot of what I hate about the state but I also through it have learned to love all the idiocies of New Hampshire because New Hampshire is such a complex that the live free or die doesn't really fit the state they don't want people to fucking live there like really they hate everybody oh my god right if they you're not from there fuck you exactly the second they see like a Massachusetts plate or somebody they're like oh the, those Massachusetts people are back get out of here we don't want you and then they're over here in our you know Franconia like the loop up here messing up our trail right. Uh, you're right 100 right uh and you talk about how like you're learning i think that's really interesting to me because being i've lived in the same town rochester that this is about that you grew up in uh so i've seen a very different side of rochester than you i didn't grow up there i wasn't born there but i did live there and seeing where it has grown from you know and as you have gone back and you've gotten to see it grow and so as soon as second i opened this i was like oh rochester and then you started pointing out places like lafayette the fairgrounds man i've gone to the school bus derbies at the fairgrounds uh, yeah. at dunkin donuts if i'm not mistaken is the one right up the road from jetpack comics it Correct, looks like yeah. that's yeah exactly <laughs> I, I know that interior anywhere and to me it was very endearing because i was like so i know funny. this place frisbee memorial which is mentioned in this book my daughter was born there and uh, like frisbee is in issue three uh it's yeah. in issue three and you mentioned the hampton casino that's where issue two takes place yeah uh hampton casino i've gone to concerts there obviously like you mentioned it there it's like oh it's very nice and rich i always thought it was like the jersey shore of new hampshire because it's like dirty now but it was yeah. just funny seeing that like you had such a different take versus me who's who's been away from home for a while i'm like oh man i love this is all the things i know i love and then you were like man i had to relearn to love it which is very interesting and that was going to be one of my questions is there's there's so much there so like it, it was cathartic for you did this help writing this help you then learn to relove it yeah absolutely um i go back often uh you know jetpacks had me out a couple of times and granite state con you know you write a book called granite state punk it sells better there weirdly enough um uh, <laughs> So yeah, I've, I've really learned to love it. And it's, it's allowed me to spend more time with my family, which is good because I got two brothers. So I get to visit them more often, which is, is really nice. And it, and it really, it really speaks to like I, some trauma, you know, I, I have some trauma and it allows me to get it out, but also do what I love and bless the state, you know, writing an alternate history to the man of the mountain is so, such a, such a good thing for me like that's 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 powerful to me because i love the old man in the mountain i was so everybody mad. remembers when it fell off the earth yeah everybody remembers that day that it just collapsed yeah like lauren the old man in the mountain is a real thing uh, okay um, i was like i remember reading about it in the comic it's up in the white mountains and if you had faced it a certain way it literally looked like the face that's why on the license plate everyone is all about the old, well in like 2002 it it fell it collapsed the whole thing collapsed yeah, just, but it's like and now it's we know new, why it's a New Hampshire lore, but what you did with it was a spin because this is a story about witches. Like the power of them comes from this old man in the mountain, which I thought was just wicked clever. Mm -hmm. So I also love that you point out how Salem has become a tourist trap and like people were literally murdered there. So I'm curious because I went to Salem for the first time a little less than a year ago, and I was actually impressed with how tastefully done the tour that I did was because it ended with a memorial to the witches and they talked about how these witches were or witches I should say these were just women and there was there, a dude too that were, there were witches murdered I mean these people were murdered and they had to like bring in the militia to stop these murders allegedly I understand <laughs> even though it actually happened in Danvers but you know that's neither here nor there well I was going to ask what your actual like do you enjoy going to Salem or is that another place that you're like ugh um, yeah, I mean, it's, I think everybody does as a kid, you know, as a, as a kid, oh, we had witches that were burning here. Let's go. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoy it. Uh, I enjoy writing about the supernatural, you know, and, and really connecting it with this, 
with this particular series. So yeah, connecting with CLM and Mass, you cannot, if you live in New England, like Massachusetts is the, the center of New England, regardless of what we admit, like all of our sports teams are there. So we have to like, even though you hate those people, you have to also love those people, right? If you want to be cool, you have to talk about, you don't go, I spent a really cool night in in Concord, you go, I spent a good night in Boston, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, those, you don't go to Manchester for a good time most of the time. Right, right, right. Uh, you know, you can't, so so those connections are really uh, intimate to me. Um, so when I started doing this, I really wanted to write, I write a lot of New Hampshire history as we go. We, we do the first uh, witch trial in New Hampshire. That's what issue two is about for Breaking Edge. Uh, in issue three, we address um, uh, a in Dover, there was a, a big mill fire. That was a huge thing where they rebuilt. We, we addressed that. Uh, and then in the issue that's coming out, we, we deal with the Mayflower and Pilgrims. Because this, if you're New England, this is your lifestyle. Like you are taught. It's, it's just as important as the president, like understanding how our president works. Like the Mayflower, like that's our shit. We own it. Like New England, these are really important. So the Pilgrims coming and all, all that stuff, all that history, we're really proud of it. Uh, even though we did tons of stuff during the Mil uh, Revolutionary War that we should talk about, but we're like, fuck that. We got to talk about. Listen, I always tell everybody Massachusetts invented America. And that, that's like right. always yeah, my that thing. Like, one of his quotes. <laughs> New England invented comic books. Like we're just seeing, you know, the Ninja Turtles and things. Yeah. Uh, it's just, yeah. It's always interesting to, to hear what locals think about a tourist trap, you know, especially yeah. like, you know, I grew up, lived my whole life in Florida. So obviously I have different opinions about certain areas in Florida. So that's why I was just curious your own personal views. So, um, but yeah, going into the, uh, the supernatural, um, Oh, I already asked that question. Yeah. So are you a fan of Supernatural? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a geek. Uh, I was a LARPer. So I did a lot of Vampire wow. the Masquerade LARPs. And like, I, I, in fact, I ran, not to brag how geeky I am. I ran about 300 players in, in Central Florida, in Orlando, in uh, stuff for, for, for Vampire. So all that stuff has always been intriguing to me, like vampires and like uh my favorite show growing up is highlander i loved highlander like that was my <laughs> shit so, oh yeah there can only be one yeah so and, and so most of my books have a supernatural tint to them um even if i don't mean to they just mm -hmm. happen to that's why i do all the cthulhu and stuff and i have a book called mediations um so i love i love exploring that um particularly though with with this particular book i love like in this which that stuff is kind of like a an algorithm for the, for the alcoholism, right? Instead of just showing people get drunk, it's like these people who are powerful or or doing something uh, are kind of the allegory of like what he doesn't understand. He doesn't fit into to what they're trying to do. You know, it's no different than my dad dealing drugs. It's just far more exciting to talk about witches. You know, right. than, well, I mean, than, you even it had alcohol to a point of numbing a certain thing that I don't want to spoil it and say what that yep. thing was, but I, I thought it was very interesting to bring that in and make it relevant. It was also funny, the AA meeting that the little spin you did on that too, that was, that actually made me giggle. And again, I don't want to ruin it. So there are a couple mm -hmm. of points, like there was comedy in here too, because you know what? I feel like comedy we use to, to deal with things now. So going in, you know, obviously this comic is dark. We're talking witches. We're talking supernatural the art. So I want to talk about the art for a few minutes. This art was amazing. It's very detailed, but you can see like, you know, the, the shadowing and you can see the pencil marks. And so how did that go back and forth with uh, uh, your artist and how did, did what you envisioned come onto the paper and how much back and forth was that? Yeah. So, uh, and Matt can back me up this. He has never been to New Hampshire at all but he knows New Hampshire. Like he can draw, he knows exactly how to draw them from pictures. Uh, there's an issue in issue three, Matt, where they, we go to Spalding high school and he literally yep. knows the position between the door and the stairs. And I didn't tell him that you can't tell that from a picture. He just knows there's that. That's one thing I, I actually wanted to bring up too, like with on to caveat off of Lauren is it's that's interesting that he d doesn't know because to me, just looking at the art, I'm like, I mean, you I knew the Dunkin' Donuts, which well, is But insane. that's what I'm saying. That, that's, that's a testament to the art. Like, I knew that dunk as soon as they were inside, because there's a scene where he's like, everybody in this town knows you, and it's Dunkin' Donuts. I'm like, I know that, like, this, this, I, I went there every morning on my way to work, 
because Cumbies is like across the street and then Jetpacks right. right down the main road and then like Spalding High School, Lafayette, and then even the outside of Frisbee and just all the little like houses, even the houses on like the main road right there, yeah. they have that very old like witchy vibe to them. I was like, wow, like I felt it immersed us. And I think between that and just like you discussing and almost like through the words, bringing it to life. Uh, so did he go off pick? Like, was there any like point where he was like, Hey, this is what I have. And you're just like, Nope, this is perfect. Or were you like, you just didn't coach him like at all as to what these places look like? No. I mean, I sent him pictures, obviously I sent him pictures, right. but like not everything. Like I didn't send him pictures of the Dunkin' Donuts. I didn't tell him the positioning of stairs. Um, Patrick, you know, to just so I don't forget, this is the first comic book. Uh, my grandmother passed away and my grandma was really good to me. And she gave me a decent chunk of chunk of money. So this was the first book in my whole catalog where I, I actually, this is the artist I wanted. Like, oh, this is God. the artist that fits. You know, I was like this grungy style. I know it's not for everyone. I know like there's going to be people turned off from the art style, but I think the people who are in the punk rock scene, who is my target audience for this book are going to dig this. And then I think if you get any people who are supernatural, they like dark gritty, like, like, like stuff. So this is, this was stuff. It's, um, you guys know Alex Cormack, uh, mm -hmm. just John Lee sing stuff. Yeah, he's kind of like I wanted like an Alex Cormack type style, and I think that that yeah, Patrick is a, a very like similar style, but I didn't want Alex Cormack because I, I, I also wanted to kind of discover someone. I wanted like because mm -hmm. I think, uh, for me personally, Alex Cormack's always going to be sync like that book and and are going to be forever entwined. So getting him and doing that, but Patrick, believe it or not almost perfect every time. Like I have very little notes. And when I do have notes, 50% of the time, he convinces me that he's right. Uh, because, <laughs> so like, like he's like, oh, here's why I did it that way. And blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, so no, I, I actively chose all those things. I chose his coloring palette and all those things specifically for that particular style and the way he does things, because I think he screams punk rock. Well, yeah. yeah, some of the colors were so beautiful too that yeah. he used for like some of the the witchcraft that was ongoing. I thought it was. Oh, I love the purple in it. And go ahead, Matt. I think Sorry. this. Well, like the punk rock. No, I I did not mean to cut you off, Lauren. But like hey, the punk rock is in the supernatural. There's like a, it's perfect, but it's also like there's a scratchy kind of like rough vibe to it, which I think also works. And when we're talking about like the punk rock scene, like I kind of grew up in it. Lauren is over here quoting country music, so we know she's she didn't grow up. Um, I just saw Blink for like the ninth time. I'm sorry, <laughs> right, but you didn't see. Anyways, uh, so is the punk rock scene? Is that something you grew up in as well, and you wanted to really incorporate into this? So, yes and no. So, uh, because of you know, I shared earlier that my parents were a very drug and alcohol family, so I traveled. So I literally so Rochester has eleven schools. They have eleven yep. different schools. I went to nine of them just so you know, growing up, because we, wow. we move so often every right. year, um, which really helped me when I got the, to middle school. Like, it was really shitty, like, growing up. But I'd, but when you get to middle school where they all combine into one, yep. like, I knew everybody. So I was extremely <laughs> popular. So I was really hard to commit to any group. Um, the only group I really committed to was more of the grunge scene. Um, oh, yeah. But, yeah. but I think there's a lot of parallels between the grunge scene and the punk scene. I think they, um, they complement each other very well, without a doubt. Yeah, but I don't want to run. You can't write a book about a old grunge head, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're you're right. You're you're hundred percent right. Um. So yeah, I was I was in the punk scene, but I've always been kind of a punk, uh, you know, a punk scene adjacent. So I would go to the concerts. Didn't always do the garb per se, but I I went to the concerts and stuff. But some of my favorite people in the world are punk punkers. I love sitting for hours talking to a punk rock, just like we would talk about comics. Yeah. They will just tell you everything going on in their world and how to solve all the fucking world's problems, but they don't want to do anything about it. And it's fascinating to me. And I love it. I just love it. <laughs> do you, you know, that it's, it's funny you do. Cause I, even the Hampton ballroom, I've gone to shows there and it's just like the comp. Cause you know, you, back in the day you used to kind of like show up to shows early. You'd have your $25 ticket. You'd be there early. Cause everybody wants to get into the pits, but you're right. Like some of the conversations I've had, it's everybody's got these ideas. And like, wow, you're a really fascinating person who the, 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 the roughness, like going into the art, right. there's the roughness around the edge. But once you started to get to know them, you're like, Oh wow, you have great idea. But you're right. The, everyone's like, man, that's somebody else's problem. Or I'm not gonna do this for the man. Or like, you know, it's it is too funny. And it's almost kind of like Zeke, too, because 
he's very punk and straight edge, but he almost seems to be running away from all that at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's very intentional. The reason why he doesn't wear a band shirt, the reason why I, I put a lack of tattoos, it's not because he's a poser. It's because if you follow punk music and punk people, there's a p- point where they get rid of all that stuff because that's also selling out. Because they realize right. that, like, now we have a uniform. So we Parodies of themselves. <laughs> uh, and I love it. And it, and it makes me happy. <laughs> so I made sure in this book, like, he has that. That's why he has the faux. Like, you could tell he had a mohawk at one point, but it's grown <laughs> out. So that's why his hair is kind of the way it is. It's all intentionally on purpose. Um, and and I, I absolutely love it. And then, you know, talk about, you know, especially as adults going to punk shows. Punk shows have the most kids of any concerts I go to. Yeah. And the kids are protected in the back. There's this weird thing about punks where they are hardcore, will punch you in the face, but also stay away from kids. You know, trans people are welcome. Like, like, like they're the, one of the most welcoming groups you'll ever see. And also so like, the most caring. It's like, yes, we, we should punch each other in the face in the pit because that's that's the etiquette. But then if somebody right. falls down, hey, we pick you up or you're right. right the kids in the back with the, Hey, you don't right. talk. It is, it is very, such an interesting <laughs> vibe. And I think you translate that very well to Zeke because he doesn't want, he's like, I don't know why I'm telling you this. Nobody pays attention to a, or like, he's very much like, I don't want to have to save the day from, you know, Hampshire's first ever, which that I brought back to life to ask questions. Cause it's my long lost ancestor. And that's now set forth on the town, but I'm going to do it. And also into that now kind of talking about the powers, like how does the alcohol in knocking himself out? Like, how did you come up with that idea of like powers? That's how they connect. Like your, his powers seem to work by knocking himself out, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, it's actually the opposite. The power, his power is like knocking himself out, shuts off the power. He doesn't have, oh, control. that's what it was. You're right. You're right. Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't have, have control. control. Yeah. It's his off switch. So, you know, um, you know, the parallel, a lot of people make the parallel between him and, and John Constantine. I see that, you know, especially Ooh, yeah. if you do the 80s and the, the punk rock, oh, yeah. you know, issues, you know, uh, the Grant Morrison run, you know, they did a lot of that stuff. Uh, but the difference between Zeke and like, uh, you know, uh, Constantine is Zeke, I promise you, you can read this issue. And I don't plan on ever stopping writing this book. Um, you can you can walk, read from now to end. He will never be good at magic because he doesn't care enough. Ooh. Like where Constantine is good at magic. Mm-hmm. So that this is just raw power that's in him. He may be able to do a thing or two, but he's never going to try to con you. He's never going to try to do any of that because it's just natural to him and he doesn't want anything to do with it. Like he doesn't want these responsibilities that were thrown on him, you know, to, to deal with. So uh, that was one of the things that I had. I wanted him to be powerful. I wanted him to be able to do a lot of these things, but I also wanted it to be, something that he can't control. He does. He needs other people. He needs, you know, the things he hates, other people, right. <laughs> you know, he hates this addiction. He needs it. All the things that he hates, he has to do to be able to control the thing that he, he has inside of him. That's- well, I think that's one of the beautiful things about the art too, because like the art's beautiful and perfect in its own way, but it's very messy. And I just, I feel like because like Zeke is the narrator and it's all about him and his struggle with so many different things. I feel like the art just meshes so well in that regard of, you know, just like you can see the lines, you can see the auras, like you can see all of that because he's being so vulnerable, but he doesn't have any of it figured out. So I think, yeah, I think that's, that's a really cool way to do it. I agree. Uh, now, how many issues are you planning to do within Grand State Punk Universe? Forever. forever. I was going to say you said forever. Um, Look, I just wanted to make sure. I know you said forever, but sometimes they're like, oh, I say forever, but I actually mean like five. So, so <laughs> the one shot is a cop out. Uh, so the one shot was to help me get published with Scout. Um, you know, they uh, they didn't like full series when they weren't done, but I wanted mm-hmm. to get it sooner. Um, you are not in New England now, but a couple of years ago, there was a, maybe you guys know, do you guys know about Black Caravan? I've heard it. Yes. Yeah. So Scout had an imprint called Black Caravan. It was very like the, the cool kids and it was sold really well, like selling very good at like hotcakes uh, books. And it, it was signed on for that. Um, so we did a series of one shot. I was originally signed on for that. I did. And I, my plan was to just do a one shot that first book. That's why it has such a definitive editing. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I loved it so much. And the artist, uh, we made a deal because I can't afford, he's very expensive, so I can't always afford him. But he also loves the book. 
that makes it a lot easier when you do these collaborations, you know, and he loves the book, he's willing to, you know, be paid on the back end or paid, paid in like chunks. Right. So I don't have to shell it all out to, to be able to do it. And he's very fast. Um, so we're going to do five to the trade. So every, we're going to do five issue arcs. Okay. So it's kind of, kind of in season. So the next one, you know, four just finished on Kickstarter. Um, that was called only poses fall in love. Number five is going to be called the pilgrim. Um, and we're going to do some Thanksgiving stuff and Mayflower stuff, to, just like we talked about, you know, it's very popular. Uh, and then we'll get our trade and then we'll go into kind of season two of what, what that looks like. So I'll, I'll kind of do like five issue arcs and then a trade. Awesome. So I saying that you're going to do it forever. Do you have a lot of ideas of where all you want Zeke to go? Yeah, 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 yeah. I have, I have at least 10 out. Um, I don't, so I'm one of those, I know some people, I hate another thing that I hate about indie writers are just, I have mapped out till issue 12. Cool. So you don't want to listen to any fan feedback. That's, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. So I don't do that, but I do have, here's the topics that I want to do in issue, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Uh, yeah. You know, I have them all mapped out. You know, we're going to do some, I, I want to, what's cool about Grand State Punk is it really allows me to go in any direction, right? I can do, you know, this latest issue had no supernatural, has just um, Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have an issue coming up that we're going to literally use panels from all the old issues and make a new story from it, using it as a collage with like tape and stuff like that. Very, I, I want to do very, very punk rock things um, with the story as I go, um, and as well as tell a story. Um, and then people love Klaus and the Eugene, they just love him. Uh, I get so many compliments of that character from uh, Breaking Edge, I don't know why he was kind of uh, just one for me. So, I, I think I, I may think do. He is a nice he guy. He just wants to like help he out. He just kind of, you know, just gets made fun of even by dead witches. Uh, so I think I want to, I think I'm going to do a, uh, a a small spin off of a couple issues of, of Granite oh. St. Goth and explore my vampire LARP stuff and like yes, do all awesome. that. I, I think that'll be a little, little fun. Maybe have Patrick draw it, maybe have somebody else draw it, but. Uh, but yeah, I plan on doing this forever. You know, uh, my contract with scouts a couple more years. They seem to keep wanting them. It seems to be selling well over there. Um, you know, obviously, if you follow me, you can get them way sooner than them because I don't. Next issue for them, the Coven, it's coming out in October, maybe. So that's 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 dude. I I'm all aboard. So I cannot wait to see kind of where this goes and where Z goes. So if you had to give it like a a, a pitch, what is your like one sentence, two sentence pitch? for Granite State Punk? Um, you know, if you didn't ask me that and just asked me to pitch it, it's because you said two sentences. Oh, you can make it as long. I was just saying, like, what is your, your pitch? It can be a really long run-on sentence. sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Granite State Punk is um, a story about uh, a recovering alcoholic who's in the punk scene, who's uh, trying to make his way, uh, but he finds out he's connected to a coven of witches, but he wants nothing to do. It is. It is worth every little bit. And now do you have, I know we just missed you at MegaCon. Do you have any upcoming conventions that you're doing, whether this year or next year planned? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I have, uh, instead of Granite State, I normally go to Granite State Con because I think it's a great convention and really good yeah. this year. If you guys are Ninja Turtles fans, they're going all out for oh, yeah. Ninja Turtles for the 40th anniversary. 40th, However, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, oh I will be in Baltimore because uh, Baltimore is where the Indie Comics play. Last year was nominated for Ringo. Hopefully we're up for Ringo again this year. Um, so we're nominated for Ringo for the lettering for Granite State Punk because lettering is a super important part of this book. Um, and uh, we were nominated for Ringo for Cthulhu Invades. I do have a book called Cthulhu Invades. Mm. Wonderland, Oz, and Neverland. Also, we have three big giant graphic novels. Here's one right here, you know, uh, for the Oz. Yes. Um, they're very, very cool. So I'll be at Baltimore next. And then I got a, a lot of small florida con so lauren's close to me but, but i mean i'm three hours away from baltimore it's in september i might have to uh try to find my way up there to uh have you ever been to baltimore i have uh, a couple times not really gotten to explore too much but it's, it's so good yeah i uh it's a three hour three hour about two and a half three hour depending on the traffic and a uh, day of the week but i might have to i have to see you up there man and one last thing is where can everybody find your works where can they find you and uh help support the great things that you're doing yeah, so you can buy any of the books from orangecombeproductions.com. 
Um, you can buy any of that. Um, like I said, uh, Grand State Punk is in comic stores. So if you want to get issue one and two, go to your local comic store, ask if they have it. Um, and then uh, I have another book called Coins of Judas uh, from Band of Bards that you can also get in comic stores. In fact, the next issue is coming out 710. So uh, that, that's all that. Uh, the other place, if you want to just learn about me, more about what I'm doing, Travis. TravisGibb.substack.com. I share very intimate stuff um, about comics and about comic creation. Um, people love my Substack because it's not just about selling stuff. I I'm very vulnerable, just like I talked about drug and alcohol. I tell stories about how all this stuff came to be and how important the comics industry is to me and how how I can't live without it. Like I I really believe comics comics taught me right and wrong. You know, they taught, they taught me, I didn't have a religious family uh, per religious, but I learned, you know, my values of, you know, from Spider-Man, you know, what to do right. and that you're going to make mistakes and it's going to be okay. I learned, yeah. you know, uh, my patriotic, anything patriotic, I learned from Captain America, you know, my, how I treat people, X-Men. Uh, maybe quit drinking from Iron Man. I mean, I, I'm not really good at it. But, <laughs> <laughs> <Us either. laughs> uh, but yeah, so, so all those things. So I, I share about that intimately. Nice. Well, we really appreciate you you taking the time. And everybody, if you seem to have forgotten show notes, that's right. The easiest place to go. Everything's right down in there. Come to Baltimore. Come to any of the Florida cons. Hit up your local comic book shop. If you happen to find Grand Estate Punk, by all means, tag us, tra tag Travis. Uh, I want to see it. I know every Wednesday, new comic book day. So while you're in there looking for your favorites, dude, just pop over, take a look at what else they have because there are really great stories that aren't just superheroes. That's one thing we always like to preach. Yes, we love our superheroes, but dude, there are so many good people doing such killer things in comic books, really great creatives like Travis doing good stuff. And uh, man, make sure you, you, you show some love, pick up some things. You never know what your next favorite comic could be. And uh, you might not even expect it. So do that. Everybody, thank you for hanging out with us. Travis, thanks again for, for hanging out. Can't wait to chat again. Anything that you have, you got a home here, man. I love getting to chat and then just, you know, it feels good getting to Lauren doesn't understand half my references or anything like that. So talking to another person who really understands it's, it's fun. And I mean, like someone that. said wicked in the comic. I didn't know people actually said wicked till I met Matt. They do believe it or not. They do. I, I actually was curious of whether or not Matt was bringing the wicked up just uh you know nope. to impress it's me it's in his vocabulary it's, regularly that's my regular vocab my dad's got a wicked bad accent i don't unless i get road rage my brother has one uh, my mom doesn't my sister doesn't it's just but like i said if i get I get angry then uh, it tends to come out a little bit so <laughs> that's just how that goes my my new hampshire accent is only in new hampshire you get me there one day and it's back I bet in Florida way too long, and Florida has no accent. We just it's true. That's it's, exactly that's why I was saying we don't have an accent. We just hate the Santos. That's all we do. That's exactly uh, as a state. <laughs> uh, well, man, thank you so much for hanging out, and everybody else. We'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for you know all the great creative interviews. Make sure you're checking those out and supporting everybody out there. We'll see you soon. Cheers. The content you are listening to is part of the Nerd Initiative Podcast Network. For more info about the home of pop culture positivity, check out nerdinitiative.com.